Hey guys, and today I'll be playing The Missing Parts of Maria Gozdek. And it's about a lady who wants to fulfill her aspirations by sacrificing parts of herself. Like literally sacrificing parts of herself. So let's begin. Sometimes I wonder what my life would be like if I never had met him. Would I still be alive? And would it be a bad thing if I wouldn't? How are you feeling? I'm in bed spit it out, dear. Don't you worry. The nurse is really nice, too. Will you come and visit me soon? I promise I will, Mom. As soon as I can. Good. How's work? Um, okay. I mean, it's not... It's kind of chaotic at the moment, but it's going well. I'm so glad to hear that. Oh, it's medication time, dear. I have to go. Okay, Mom. I'll call you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Oh, man. You're laid off? <laughs> I was laid off two months ago, and I can't bring myself to tell my mother. I can't ask her for money, as she is barely, barely able to support herself, but with her illness. And I'm afraid the worry can make her worse. My landlord told me to pack my stuff and move out by the end of the week, the day after tomorrow. I haven't been able to bring myself to start packing, though. I've been to about a dozen job interviews since I got the sack. What if I get a call? I know it's stupid, yet I keep hoping. I don't have anywhere else to go either. I suppose I might be able to crash for a few nights at my older sister Carolina's place in Columbus. Both Carolina and her husband Albert are just too successful to tolerate a miserable piece of shit like me for long though. Ah, your sister sounds insufferable. Again, I could go to my mom's place in Martinsburg. It's been vacant since she was hospitalized. Problem is, if I couldn't find a job in Charleston, what are the chances of me getting one in Martinsburg? And how do I tell mom? Man, why does it have to come to this? What am I supposed to do? Let's check the answering machine. Hey, Maria, did you call? We took Duck to see a movie. If it was about money, I mean, I'm sorry, but we really can't help now. And you really need to learn to manage by yourself. So hey, let me know if you hear back from Walmart or whatever. It's all in your hands. Bye. Wow, this really love and support at its most touching. I think I'm glad you weren't there when I called. What do I do now? Hmm... Go outside? Yeah, I could do with a breath of fresh air. Figuratively, for the most part. But some literal fresh air wouldn't hurt either. I slide into my boots, put on my coat, and walk out of the apartment and take the elevator to the first floor. Outside is chilly and eerily quiet. The rumble of distant traffic from the interstate is the only reminder that there is still life in the city. One of the street lights is flickering, plunging the already poorly lit street into darkness before coming back on moments later. I'm not sure if I'm glad or uneasy that there are no people in sight. A bit of both, perhaps. I start walking, doesn't matter where. I try not to think about anything, just absorb the stairless void of the night. I hear a strange sound behind me, like huge wings flapping. I turn around but see nothing. But then, when I turn back again... So, they never called you back. Where the hell did this guy come from? And is it even a guy? Not Cyber Dynamics, not London Sports, not Men's Delivery, not even Walmart. This city just doesn't need you. Who the hell are you and what do you want? I am Oren, and I want to offer you a deal. No thanks, please find somebody else. I can help you get a good job. Cyberdynamics, you want them to get back to you and offer you work? I can arrange that. Okay, how's that deal of yours work? The deal is that I grant your wishes. Great, now I'm talking to a freaking fairy. You got it, you sign a contract. <laughs> a fairy's normal? You sign a contract and they grant your wishes in return for your organs. I mean, might as well take a kidney, right? My what? Organs, body parts, say, I give you that job at Cyberdynamics and you give me an ear or an eye. Oh shit, 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 this guy's a maniac. Uh, let's run. I turn around and start running away as fast as I can. Is that nut job chasing me? I don't dare look back. Pante opened the apartment complex door and rushed to the elevator. I jabbed the button repeatedly, glancing back to see if he has followed me. When the elevator finally arrives, I jump in and press 4. Once on the 4th floor, I dart out of the elevator and cross the hallway to my door. There is a note slip under it. I grab it without thinking, get inside the apartment and lock the door behind me and gasping. Should I call the police? 
Should I call Carolina? Could the creep have followed me? I don't think I heard his footsteps behind me, but I could barely hear anything besides my own gasping. What even was that? I'm so confused. I noticed a note that I still have holding in my trembling hands. Contract. I hereby agree to have my wishes granted in exchange for one organ of body part per wish. For my first wish, I agreed to part with my... I wanted to blank to initiate the contract. The rest of the page is filled with a tiny print describing the terms of the deal. Of course, it's in the tiniest of tiniest handwriting. Holy fuck, it's better than Master knows where I live. Man, the contract... <laughs> cops? Where are the cops gonna do? Let's call the cops. I dial 911. 911, what's your emergency? The man is... I realize I don't even know how to explain what just happened. They all sound so bizarre, they might think that I'm high. I wish I was. Hello? A man is following me. He knows where I live. He has threatened to remove my organs? What is the address of the emergency? It takes a moment before I can remember my own address and state it to the dispatcher. I expect the conversation to end there, but instead I keep getting more questions. My name, the phone num number I'm calling from, if I can see or hear the man right now. Despite the panic, a tiny cynical voice in my head knows that this is almost like one of my job interviews and going about as well. Okay, an officer has been dispatched to your address. Please wait for their arrival and do not open the door until you have confirmed their identity. Thanks. As I put down the receiver, I realized the dispatcher was saying something else before I hung up. I slouched against the wall and wait, listening for any noises coming from the shared corridor. For a while, there was none, and I find myself hoping that no one comes. Eventually, I hear footsteps. Well, this could be one of two things. I fell on my bag for the mace. Police department? This isn't a sickle's voice. I sigh with relief as I open the door. Good evening, madame. I am Officer Dorish with CPD. You have received a call for help. May we come in? We? Me and my partner. Hello. Oh shit, he's with the police? Or just in cahoots with his officer? Well, I'm screwed every way. My feet feel frozen to the floor, and for a moment I just stare at the two men, unable to move or speak. Ma'am, will you come inside? No, this is the guy who threatened me. This is the same guy who threatened me in the street. Your partner's a criminal. I didn't know what I expected to happen after saying this, but for a long moment, nothing happens at all. The officer's expression remains blank. There is no sign of anger or surprise or skepticism. Nor does he a so much glance at the other man, Orin, who seems to be grinning at me. Ma'am, this must be a case of mistaken identity. I can assure you this is my partner. He is not involved in any criminal dealings. Perhaps the person you encountered happened to look like me? We can help you find him. Um, no other creature on the planet looks like you. I don't need any help, there was a mistake. Let's say that. I don't need help officers. I tried to sound calm, like I'm in control of the situation, and my heart is pounding like crazy in my temples. There was a mistake, I shouldn't have called the police. I will be going to bed now. Good night. Good god, would they please just go away? The officer looks about to say something, but Oren speaks first. Well, in that case, we will be leaving, madame. Please refrain from calling the police in the future, unless you are certain the police can help you. He says the last part slowly, with cold, matter of fact menace. Then he turns to leave, and another officer follows him down the hallway. I close and lock the door. When the elevator closes its door and starts moving, I collapse into a heap on the floor. I feel my self-control sleep away, giving way to an oppressive headache. I'm too tired to even try to attempt to process what just happened. Instead, I break down in tears. What have I done to deserve this? I've got no money, no job. My mother's in the hospital, my sister doesn't give two shits about me, and now some sicko is stalking me. God, do you hear me? Why me? My whole body is shaking as I crawl into bed. I'm sobbing so hard I can't breathe. This is so damn cruel. If this sickle wants to cut off my ear, let him get on with it. I don't care anymore. I bring my head under my pillow and try to calm down, but the sobbing just won't go away. My throat is burning. My head is throbbing. My body feels drained of strength. I get off the bed to get some Tylenol from the medicine cabinet. As I head for the bathroom, still sobbing, my foot touches something under the floor. The contract. An organ for a wish, you say. 
I lift a contract from the floor, grab a pencil from my tiny writing desk, and write in an ear. Um, an ear. Better. I think I need my eye. Oh, in the moment I finish my the word, my headache appears to abate. I leave the contract on the floor and go back to bed. Screw all this. I really need to sleep. The room is huge and empty. There is no furniture, no windows, and strangely no door. All there is is a vast space between four carbon walls. You hear what sounds like muffled voices coming from the outside. I call up, but I can barely hear my own voice. The room seems to absorb every sound. My steps are silent as I move from one wall to another, looking for a way out. Suddenly, I sense another presence in the room. I turn around and see a dark figure with glowing green eyes. Before I can react, the figure reaches for my head and tears off my ear. The room swallows my screams. When I wake up, it's bright outside. I'm in bed, still in my boots, and something hurts in my head. The phone is ringing. Did Carolina decide to show some sisterly generosity? I pick up the receiver. Hello? Hello, this is Maria Goswick. Um, yes? This is Mark from Cyber Dynamics. You had an interview with us in January for a position in the sales department. We have reviewed many applications and consider you to be the best suited candidate for the position. Are you still interested in the job? Yes, I mean absolutely. How? When do I start? We'll be waiting for you tomorrow at 9. Do you remember the address? I do. Thank you so much. It's... See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you. I cannot believe this is happening. Cyberdynamics was probably the most competitive vacancy I've applied for, and I thought the interview didn't go well. Who cares? Though I've actually managed to get a job there. Ha, take that, guys. I began to cry tears of joy. The receiver still pressed against my ear. Then I realized the receiver is pressing directly into my skull. Suddenly, I remember last night. I rush to the bathroom and look in the mirror. My right ear is missing. I didn't hear from Orin again, and cannot seem to find a contract anywhere. When Carolina learns that I got a job, she transfers a thousand dollars into my account so that I can pay my bills. The following month, and apparently to her surprise, I pay her back. Now that I have a proper job, my sister suddenly seems to like me. She advises me to her place in Columbus every now and then, and even Albert seems friendly enough. I grow long hair to cover my missing ear. I still feel uncomfortable in public, but I manage to learn it. I learn to manage it. I even found a boyfriend. His name's Tim, and he's a manager at Men Mendes. I can't say I don't enjoy this new life, but I do feel incomplete without my ear, and I keep seeing dreams of the Carmen room. I should grow hair out. Oh, hi, Maria. Are you busy tomorrow evening? I need you here at six. Um. Sure. Okay, I'll be there. Excellent. Bye now. Put down the receiver, and out of the corner of my eye, I see Tim glaring at me. Let me guess, no movies tomorrow because you're letting Omar exploit you again? Tim, it's not like that. I just don't understand, Maria. Do you really love him flirt so much? Do you actually care about anything else? Or is it just Omar? Would you rather spend time with him than me? Tim, this is ridiculous. You know what's ridiculous, Maria? The way he uses you. It just pisses me off how you listen to anything that old bastard says. And you're completely deaf to everything else. Deaf? Are you saying this because I'm missing an ear? Oh, for goodness sakes, you're gonna play that card again. You know what, Maria? I'm sick of this. I'm not going to spend my life trying to fix yours. I wish you realized that your problems have nothing to do with this missing body part. I feel a flash of anger rush in my body. I wish you knew what it's like to have a body part missing. Well, that's this. I'm not going to listen to this bullshit. I watch Tim storm out of the apartment. I'm angry and desperate and confused. I don't call after him either to try to stop him or to tell him he's left behind his umbrella. I go to the kitchen and pour myself a whiskey. This should stop the shaking. Okay, I need something to do. Um, I don't know if calling her sister would be any help, but let's just call her to see what she says. I still find it hard to believe, but Carolina and I have grown much closer over the past months. Maybe it's because I'm finally a mature human being with a proper job. Maybe it's because I lost an ear. Or because our mother has been seriously ill. Most likely it's all these things together. So when I need someone to talk to, I call my sister. Hello? Hey. Maria, what happened? Are you crying? No, just a little. Tim and I had a fight. Again? I'm getting sick of this guy. He's been together for like, what, two months? I thought they'd be- oh, four. 
We began together for four months and we had more fights than Mike Tyson. I complete the sentence and Carolina chuckles. That's right, you need to dump him, Maria. I think he's just dumped me. Oh, how did that happen? Tim got mad because Omar asked me to do a ship tomorrow and I agreed. He said the mean things that I took personally, then he just left. Jesus, Maria. I just wish you could understand what it feels like. He's an asshole, listen. It's really for the best that- Oh, um, Maria, can I call you back later? Go call him from school. I'll call you back, okay? Yeah, sure. Thanks for listening. You're always welcome. Bye-bye. I decided to go for a walk to get my mind off of what happened. It's sunny outside, but I take my umbrella just in case. In West Virginia, you never know when it'll start raining. As I walk out of my apartment and turn to lock the door, I hear a strange sound coming from the elevator and I turn around. Long time no see, Maria. I instantly know who this is. What are you doing here? I'm here to fulfill your wish. You already have and I don't have any further wishes. Someone didn't read the terms of her deal, did she? It's a lifelong contract. Every time you make a wish, I'll make it come true. But I didn't make any new wishes. Because if you made to go, didn't you say, I wish you know what it was like to have a body part missing? Oh man. What? You can't possibly mean that. I'll make your friend Timothy understand what it feels like to be missing a body part. And you will give me a body part for fulfilling your wish. It was a figure of speech, man. I didn't literally mean that I want him to experience what missing a body part feels like. It's just an expression that doesn't count as a wish. It wasn't just a figure of speech, Maria. In that moment, you meant it. You made your sleeve yourself into thinking otherwise, but I know you did. If it hadn't, I wouldn't be here. Is Oren right? Or just messing with me? Did I mean it when I said, said it? I honestly can't tell anymore. It is therefore my contractual obligation to fulfill your wish at the price of a body part. So, what will you give me in return? An arm? A leg? Man, I'm not gonna give you anything. Is that fall. Would you rather I decide what to take? I could take your heart, you know. You weren't smiles on me with cold menace. Oh my god. You take our heart? This is ended right here and there? Arm, leg, arm, or leg. Um, oh my god. Uh, let's take a leg. A leg. Yeah, a leg. Take my leg, but can you just leave Tim alone? I beg you, just take my leg. Don't hurt him. It's too late, Maria. Be careful what you wish for. With this, Orin gets into the elevator and disappears. I collapse on my knees and press my head against the wall. I hear a door open behind me, and an old woman pops past, staring at me as she does. I don't care. I down four energy drinks that night to keep myself from sleep. I'm afraid of falling asleep and waking up without a limb. But even more, I don't want anything to happen to Tim. I consider calling him, but what can I say? Be careful, there's a magical creature who wants to take away your one of your organs. And even if I warn Tim, can I really stop Orin? By sunrise, I can't resist sleep anymore. I turn on my stereo and crank up the volume, but I still fall asleep in my art chair minutes later. I find myself in the Carmen room again. It seems to have gotten bigger. There is still no door to be found. I know something on the opposite wall, a window, that's keeping my way out. I rush to the window, my steps are as always soundless, but when I get close I realize it was only a painting. In the painting, a group of children are playing on a seashore, under a bright blue sky. Could there be something behind the painting? I carefully remove the frame from the wall and discover a big square hole in it concealed. Suddenly, a long black arm projects from the hole. I scream and back away, but the arm is so long and so fast. I grab my legs and start pulling at it with immense force, tearing it off my body. I feel my tendons snap and my heart and my muscles tear with a horrible sound. My mouth fills with blood. Is blood why the walls are this color? Just before I lose my senses, I notice a pair of evil green eyes staring at me from inside the hole. The next day I woke up with a prosthetic where my leg used to be. <laughs> nice enough to give her a prosthetic leg. It doesn't really hurt, but as soon as I see it, I throw up right in my bed. That same day, I learned that Tim got in a drinking fight in a bar and was stabbed in the eye. The surgeon had to remove his eye and replace it with a prosthetic. When I came to visit Tim in the hospital, he tells me to get out. He seems to blame me for what happened. Of course, he has no idea how right he is. I tell everyone I had developed an infection and had to have my leg amputated. 
Caroline doesn't seem to believe me. She probably suspects it has something to do with Tim. I guess she thinks he was violent or something, but she never really says anything. Omar transfers me to a less physically demanding job. The money is still good though. In fact, technically speaking, he has given me a promotion. I had a pity, of course. I had disgusted with myself for accepting it, but I couldn't afford to refuse. Mom is ailing, her prognosis, prognosis isn't good. She has lost nearly all her eyesight. I came to visit her visit as much as I can, but I can never tell her about my lost leg. I start avoiding people, limiting my social interactions to my family and my workplace. I feel exposed with my prosthetic even though I learned to cam camouflage it well. I almost cherish my phantom pains as they remind me of the time I was more complete. Nightmares of the Carmen room became more frequent. There was never a way out. I don't know, maybe she tells her mom, her mom might help her. Maria, what took you so long? Hey Carolina. Uh, there were no taxis for whatever reason, so I had to walk. Carolina and Albert live in Columbus German Village, which is not that far from Greyhound Station, but I'm still adapting to my prosthetic leg, and what's a 20 minute walk for most people takes me closer to 40. It took me even longer today due to the bad phantom pains I've had since the morning. I tried to hide it though. Oh sweetie, you should have called me. Albert would have picked you up. I'm so glad you're here. I'm still getting used to being called sweetie. Hey Maria, thanks for coming. Hey Albert, thanks for inviting me. No problem. Sorry, I better not leave the stove for too long. Albert disappears into the kitchen. So, how's mom doing? I went to Mar Martinsburg to visit mom yesterday. No improvement. The doctor told me, you know, that we shouldn't be too hopeful. I see. I'll go see her next week. Where's Duck? So where's the birthday boy? He's in the living room playing on his Nintendo. Will you keep him company there for a few minutes while we finish up in the kitchen? His friends will be here soon. Aw oh, man, I do the wrong thing, didn't I? You'll save me from them then? I promise. It's like sixth birthday today and he's having a party. Carolina has invited me even though she knows I'm terrible with kids. I guess it's just because I haven't visited for a while. She asked me to stay the night, as I usually do when I come over. I walk into the living room. Duck notices me and pauses his game. Hey there, Duck. Happy birthday. Hi, Maria. Did you bring me a present? Sure did, but you'll have to wait for the party to start to find out what it is. Okay, Dad told me to think of a wish to make. Did you think of one? Yes, but I can't tell you. I had many wishes, but I chose the most important. What's your most important wish? You better not say anything. Duck is blissfully unaware of how comfortable of a territory this is for me. I don't know, Duck. We I have too many. We have had only one wish you could ask for. What would it be? To get all your limbs back? It's hard to say off the top of my head. I need to think about it. Come on. Everybody has a wish. Tell me yours. Please. It's my birthday. Duck's always like this. Whenever things are going his way, he makes a scene. He may be right though. I can't run away from my wishes forever. Or can I? There are so many things that want to happen. But am I willing to pay the price? What's your number one wish? <laughs> this is going to be a bad idea. For your grandma to get better. <sighs> I want to do that. To have my missing parts back. But if we have a missing parts back, she's going to take another body part. So... I don't have any wishes. Mm, what should I try to choose? Can I save? No, I can't save. It's for your crown to get better to break a contract I signed a while ago. Maybe, maybe this will work. To break a contract I signed a while ago. Break a contract? What contract? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you. Please, it's my birthday, you know. I'll tell you later, okay? It's some um, really boring legal stuff. Okay. This kid is nosy as heck. Okay, now it's done. I made another wish despite promising myself never to do that again. And I know what's going to follow. I wonder if Orin has followed me to Ohio if he will wait for me to return to West Virginia. We chat with Duck a little more. Just before we run out of things to talk about, two of his friends arrive. Their mothers join Albert and Carolina in the kitchen, and they decide to follow suit. But before that, I need to use the bathroom. It's gonna be in the mirror. I slowly walk to the bathroom. The phantom leg makes walking an ordeal, but I managed to learn to manage. When I flush, I hear the doorbell ring. Another one of Duck's friends must have arrived. I wash my hands and lean against the wall for a few minutes. 
The phantom leg is killing me. Just a moment, moment. Okay, I walk out of the bathroom. Hi, Maria. Oh, he turned into a kid. Jesus Christ, is it? Who else would it be? So you want to get out of your contract, gay? Yes. Well, I'm sure you didn't read the terms, but there is actually an option to cancel. What do I have to do? Serve me. You'll become my tool for 10 years. Man. I knew it would be something like that. And how are you going to use me? You'll help me grant other people's wishes. Somehow I'm sure it's going to be way worse than it sounds. When do I start? When you wake up tomorrow. Okay, let's get this party started. Carolina comes out of the kitchen carrying a tray of food. Albert is behind her with a birthday cake. Neither of them seem to notice anything strange about Owen's appearance. What are you two whispering about in the hallway? Come to the dining room with us. Why does it always say July 67th? I am in the Carmen room. The voices coming from the outside seem to have gotten louder. They sound anxious. I can almost make out the words, but not quite. I look around. To my disbelief, I notice a door in the far corner. The door is ajar, and I see a light coming from the outside. This is my chance to escape. I rush to the door. I stumble and fall on the floor. The floorboards are sticky and emit a foul smell. Is something out of the floor? I get up and make the way for the door. The voices are almost clear now. I can smell the fresh air coming from the outside. I feel the gentle fingers of the wind touch my hair. I run outside and find myself in the sunny garden. There are dozens of people there speaking in a language I do not understand. They don't seem to notice my presence. I walk past them, absorbing the sun and letting the wind caress my face. I smell the ocean breeze in the distance. I know this that this is where I'm headed. At the gates of the garden, a dark figure with emerald eyes is waiting for me. He seems to be grinning. Oren makes me his tool, as he promised having me run errands for him. I hardly ever see him though. Every day, I find an envelope with an assignment and a few 10 or $20 bills slip under my door. Most of the assignments are connected to other people's wishes. I have to quit my job at Cyberdynamics, much to Omar's surprise and Carolina's disapproval. My mother died the following month. I feel guilty I didn't wish for Oren to heal her. Carolina and I almost stopped talking now that nothing seemed to connect us. Orange assignments range from simple to terrible. Sometimes it's just talking to an old loner. Sometimes it's delivering a fix to a junkie in a drawer. Once I have to call a woman whose boyfriend cheated on her and pretending to be the girl she he slept with, explain how I got him drunk and seduced him despite his processions. Poor Edith seems to buy the whole thing and redirects her anger to me at me. One day, Oren orders me to go to Tim's place. Oh. Okay. Apparently Tim is lonely and desperate and misses me. When I get there, he is plastered and his face is covered in snot. He actually tries to hit me before he collapses on the floor. I still feel incomplete, but Oren's assignments keep me busy enough to almost not notice. I want to hate this new life as a slave, but strangely I don't. Of course, I can't wait to be free again, but that's a long way to go for now. For now, I'm just glad I have a wish without being afraid of it. I'm so relieved that the nightmares of trying to escape the Carmen Doom are gone. The heck? That's just sad. And the guy, or whatever it is, says that it's a fairy. I guess that makes sense. And they always have the terms of contract like that are like in the smallest, like tiniest, like print. Okay, let's wish for our mother to get better. For your grandma to get better. Yeah, I wish grandma would get better too. Yeah. Okay, now it's done. I made another wish despite promising myself never to do that again. And I know what's going to follow. I wonder if Orin has followed me to Ohio away from me in West Virginia. Okay. And then he's back. Oh god. Who else? You made a wish and I'm here to grant it. You don't have much time though. What will you give me in return? A kidney, perhaps a lung? Man, a kidney. I'm not giving you my lung. I'm not supposed to breathe. Take my kidney. Will you really heal my mother? Of course. Have I ever let you down? Yeah, if you are in. Okay, let's get this party started. Okay. I'm in the Carmen room. The voices coming from the outside seem to have gotten louder. They sound anxious. I can almost make out the words, but not quite. 
And there's a door that's ajar. <laughs> we tried our chance to escape. I rush to the door. I stumble and fall on the floor. The floorboards are sticky and emit a foul smell. There's something under the floor. I get up and make my way for the door. The voices are almost clear now. I can smell the fresh air coming from the outside. Feel the gentle fingers of the wind touch my hair. A dark figure appears in the doorway. Obscuring all white and muffling the voices, the emerald green eyes stare at me with cold indifference. A long arm reaches from my chest. Suddenly, I am frozen in place. I cannot scream. I cannot breathe. I just feel the creature's hand break through my ribcage. It hurts more than all the pain I've ever felt combined. And I, but I do not even move. Only a shallow squeaking clown comes from my throat as the creature's hand fumbles through my body. Then I feel something snap inside me. My insides are burning like a thousand suns. The hand that covered in blood produces an organ. The creature smiles, seems to have smile at me and everything around turns black. I wake up in the early hours of the next morning. Good daughter ending? The phantom leg is gone, but I feel a strange hollowness inside. I go to the hospital later that day and the doctor confirms that one of my kidneys is missing. She assures me this does not pose any threat to my life and seems to believe I was born that way. Indeed, the missing kidney has little effect in my life. I have to follow a stricter diet, but other than that, my life does not change much. I do feel painfully incomplete, however. My mother recovers and moves back to her home in Barnesburg. I come to visit every weekend and help her with the chores. Carolina and I are not as close anymore. We talk on the phone every now and then, but I hardly ever visit her in Columbus. I immerse in my work at Cyberdynamics and my efforts are rewarded with another promotion. I find myself in charge of the sales division. I don't particularly enjoy having to be around so many people, but I do try my best, and Omar seems to appreciate my effort. I start going out with Mark, the HR guy. He doesn't seem to mind my disability. On our second day, I learned that he himself has a prosthetic leg. Dreams of the common room continue, but I learn, almost learn to accept them. Even when I'm dreaming, I know there is no way out of the room. I decide to make another wish ever, not to make another wish ever again. And this time, I better not give in. Let's wish to have our missing parts back. I thought you, I thought you said that. Would it be nice if it came true? Thanks, I guess. Okay, now it's done. I made another wish despite promising myself never to do that again. I know what's going to follow. I wonder if Oren has followed me to Ohio. Okay, we chat a little more. And then they came to a kidney. Okay, so we have our parts back. That's weird. There's people around us be like, How do you have an ear and your leg back? It's really weird. <laughs> okay, let's just do our kidney again. Okay, take my kidney, but will you really give me back my ear and leg? Okay. This is gonna be going to be really weird. Okay, I wake up in the early hours of the morning and know that my ear and legs are back where they used to be. I do feel a strange hollowness inside though. I leave quietly while everyone is still asleep. Near that day I go to the hospital, the doctor confirms one of my kidneys is missing. She confirms that it's not. Alright. She's glad to have her ear and leg back, but they feel fake somehow, like incredibly realistic prosthetics. Oh man, well duh. I was like, what the freak? How do you get a leg and an ear back? My sister seems to be worrying of me and does not seem to believe my explanation that my ear and leg have been restored thanks to cutting edge experimental surgery. I'm sure she has some crazy theory of her own, but it certainly can't beat the insane reality of my situation. I ran into Tim in the street one day. He is drunk and disheveled as hell, and his remaining eye is bloodshot and slides over, slides over me unrecognizably. I quit my job in Cyberdynamics and moved to Columbia, SC. I find a job there and rent a studio apartment near the river. I enjoy the fact that there nobody knows me. I don't know anybody, and for the foreseeable future, I intend to keep it that way. I keep seeing dreams in the Carmen room. I always learn to accept them. Even when I'm dreaming, I know there's no way out. And you decide to never make a wish again. And let's say I don't have any wishes. Everybody has a wish. Well, not me. Liar. That's not very nice. And it's not nice to lie. Man, this kid's whiny. Duck turns away from me and 
or importantly returns to his game. Good job, Maria. You're just a sad kid on his birthday. I had no choice though. After what happened to Tim, I promised myself to never make any wishes. Not say them out loud, and if I could help it, my life would make wishes in my mind. Whatever happens, I will not let Oren have any more of my body parts. I don't know what Oren uses him for, but he'll have to find another supply. I'm sure he has plenty, and I'll live my life as best as I can with what is left of me. Soon, two Duck's friends arrive, and mother join, and they follow suit. <laughs> I am so mad! When the party starts, I try to ignore Duck's bitter glances. And the room again. And the door. Wait. I run outside and find myself in a sunny garden. There are dozens of people here, speaking in a language I do not understand. As soon as I see his tense like presence, the conversation stops. The people start turning to face me. Their faces are blank, containing nothing but the eyes and blinking and menacing. The people surrounding me, oh, they surround me. I consider retreating into the common room, but it's too late. Several of them have blocked my path. The silent circle around me gets tighter. I want to say something, but the words are stuck in my throat. What are they going to do to me? Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a dark figure with emerald eyes watching me from a distance. The termination ending. Didn't wish for it to you. After the funeral, Carolina gives me a hug, which I don't remember her doing since I was a teen. We grew even closer, discovering a sisterly bond we never really shared before. I came to Columbus every other weekend. This doesn't like me very much, but Carolina doesn't even notice. Just because you didn't tell him his wish? That kid's kind of bratty. I immerse myself in my work at Cyberdynamics, and Omar rewards me with generous bonuses. I do not get another promotion, though. Oh! Next March, I learned that Tim died of renal failure. Apparently, he had taken to the ball since losing his eye and began neglecting his health. The autopsy shows he had only one kidney. Oh. Oh. Yeah, only one kidney. I avoid interacting with people outside of work. With Caroline and her family the only exception. I don't want to be around people, as it makes me feel too exposed, incomplete, and vulnerable. I notice even my colleagues don't really like me. Nightmares of the Carmen room continue to haunt me and become almost nightly. I start taking Annex and try to convince myself it makes me better, but it probably doesn't. Maybe it does help a little with the phantom pains. Sometimes I think you hear the sounds of gigantic wings flapping nearby. But when I turn around, there's no one there. I think Oren is trying to wear me down, force me into making another wish out of desperation. There are moments when I feel this close to doing so, but I'm able to control myself. Come what may, I will put up a fight. Okay. Alright, and that's the end. I'm not sure if I got all the endings, but I'm pretty satisfied. Um, so the best ending was, I don't feel like with the mother being alive still. I don't know, her sister never really liked her, let's just be honest. I don't know why she's trying to force her relationship with her sister, but her sister doesn't like her. Because they're like, I don't know, class a bunch. But yeah, it's just sad overall, especially what happened with her ex-boyfriend. Like, he didn't deserve that and she didn't mean that. So yeah, I really enjoyed this game. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!